Yosinju, uh, Chidori Lockneck, um, this main concept is to use Chidori to uh, kind of lock your opponent from being able to uh, draw into their good cards, you know, by uh, throwing a card, uh, um, detaching the material, Target a face of a card they control and put it on top of the deck. That way, that card locks them out from drawing another card. Especially if it was a, if the card was, you know, a dead card or a card that wasn't that big of a deal, or if it was a big monster. Let's say hypothetically, it was Blue Eyes White Dragon. You can throw Blue Eyes on top of your opponent's deck, and that will become a dead draw. It will lock them from obviously being able to draw into something else. Then let's say he does manage to get something on the field. You just make another Chidori, or if you still have the the, the, the Chidori you used in the first place, still on the field because you protected it, then you can do it again and target another face-up card, throw it on top of your opponent's deck and lock them out. So with two turns, you can, with one Chidori, you can lock them out by throwing any face-up card they have on top of their deck. Um, but then, of course, he has a summoning ability where it is... When you summon, you could target a face down card, your opponent controls, and throw it to the bottom of the deck. And by having it on the bottom of the deck, it will make it a lot harder for them to be able to access that, you know, to get that card again. Because it'll take longer. Um, if you send a monster, they have face down back to the bottom of the deck. If they have a search card, they'll search it out. Good for them. But if they don't, bad for them, right? But this monster essentially by itself gets rid of two cards, so that's awesome. Uh, get rid of a face down card, and I'll get rid of a face up card. And then this deck obviously can easily create it because all of the main monsters in the deck are all level four win types. So then we got, so we got uh, let me continue with the lock aspect. Um, roll, roll the Cree, you know, will negate your opponent's, your opponent's traps, so that'll lock out any of their floodgates, you know, stuff like banning's emptiness, um, whatever, mainly banning's emptiness, but, you know, because you do exceed a lot in this deck, and banning's emptiness, of course, can stop that, so roll the Cree can shut that down. Any other floodgate, macrocosmos, whatever, you know, anything that's problematic. Uh, even your opponent, if your opponent plays anti-spell fragrance, you do play um, 16 spells in this deck. So if they were to play anti-spell fragrance, you know, that will slow you down from being able to use most of your good spells. So Roll the Creek can take care of that. Alright. Then we got Wing Wing Blast. This can help you with the lock, because this will let you throw another card on your point side field on top of their deck. So after you use Chidori to throw something on top of the deck, you can use Wing Wing Blast to throw something else on top of that. So that will lock them out for two more turns, because then they're going to be drawing the same stuff they already had. So, uh, Win Arts is good. Chidori is Win all the yukais and all the main monsters in the main deck their win so you could tribute them for uh, spiritual win art target a card your opponent has on their side of the field and place it on the bottom of their deck so essentially win, uh, spiritual win art and uh, phoenix wing blasts are mimicking not mimicking but they essentially give you Chidori's effect in trap form, right? So, so that's mo the the cards you you typically we use to to lock your opponent from being able to get to good stuff, being able to get to their outs. All right, so we got Hermit Yukai and um, you, um you'll send you. I'm a these haven't been updated because this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, so I'm going to just go call them 1, 2, and 3 in the order which I have them in the deck. 
the, the numbers might not be accurate so I'm gonna call this uh, it'll send you number uh, comma one when it's normal summon you can summon another you'll send you monster except a copy of itself you mainly exceed so you're not really gonna worry too much about its secondary effect but I'll mention it anyway this card can attack your opponent directly but when it does so using this effect any amount of damage it inflicts to your opponent is half and then throw in the end phase when this card was normal summon return it to the hand right. then this will be will send you comma two when you normal summon this card you get another normal summon you can summon now you'll send you monster except you'll send you uh, comma himself if you control another you'll send you monster you can target one face of card your opponent controls return to the hand essentially that would give you a similar effect to quill pen letting you bounce a card your opponent controls back to the hand um, <clears throat> but this one does only face up while the pen does any card so this is good for getting rid of something just by summoning him so typically you want to summon him second so you can get that effect obviously and then during the end phase if this card was summoned return it to your hand uh, was normal summon return to hand then we got you'll send you comma three when this card is normal summon after you summon it you can summon another you'll send you monster except a copy of himself when another you'll send your monster control inflicts battle damage to your opponent you can add a you'll send you card from your deck to your hand except a copy of him and then during the end phase if he was normal summon he'll return to hand this is Yosenju Suji Kiri Kazi. I don't know his alternate name. If he had, if if he has one, and he doesn't have a, a summon effect to summon another Yosenju ability, um, but he does have that during either player's turn. I mean, during either player's damage step, when an opponent's monster. When 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 a Yosenju monster you control battles an opponent's monster, you can discard this card and that monster gains a thousand attack until the end of the turn, which is really good. It's like a Kalut and honest, whichever way you want to look at it. It's a nice little hand trap, right? Get that little extra thousand boost, which is very useful. He also has an effect that while he's on the field, uh, once per turn, of course. You can target one Yosenjo monster on the field. It gains a thousand attack until then turn. You could target himself, so he can essentially become a two thousand. With tanky, he'll become twenty one. So that's very important to keep in mind. Very useful. Then we got Dinotherium. He's a level four wind type. He can special summon, so it makes it. You know you can do a, some pretty good exceed plays especially if your opponent let's say you summon one of your 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 sinjus and so many veilers or breakthrough skills or even skill drain you know what i mean play something in this chain whatever to negate your monster's um ability preventing you from summoning another 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 monster you can you can special summon uh, Dino Theorem, and then you still have two monsters, and you can still go into an exceed play. So that's part of what he's there for. Plus, he can help you go into an OTK because you can special him, then normal summon like three Yukai's, and right there's four monsters. You know, that should be enough to do your opponent uh, close to eight thousand. And if they still have some life left, you can ex go into main phase two, exceed into two Gaga Cowboys, and you know what I mean, finish your opponent off. In this build, I only have one Cowboy, but 
and a typical OTK build you will use two cowboys at least so you can finish off your opponent three tankies for consistency of course to search out um, your, your your sinju so that way you have one copy of each you know so that way when you summon one you can summon another one summon another one summon another one and then of course the 100 extra power boost comes in handy you know to perform an OTK then we have Quill Pen of Goldus. Goldus, really good card. Target two wind monsters in your graveyard, and then target one card on the field. Shuffle the two that's in the graveyard back into your deck, and then return one card on the field back to the owner's hand. A lot of times I like to use it on Tanky, so I'll return some Yosin Juice, for example, back into my deck. Bounce Tanky back to my hand, play Tanky, Add one of those Yosinjus that I added back into the deck to my hand, you know, so that I can reuse them. So, you know, especially if I want to reuse um, this one. So, good plays, good plays. But also, this is a good, uh, it's good, is a good card to be to use with the Gusor Emerald or Chidori. Since this is your Chidori lock deck, right? You want to recycle these to reuse them. Tip, you know, of course you can't use the Gusso Emerald to recycle your Chidoris. But it's nice to have a spell card that can recycle your Chidoris for you. And get rid of something problematic in, in the process. This effect doesn't destroy, so it's good against monsters. It can't be destroyed by a uh, card effect. Or in case your opponent has a Stardust or something, you can use this to get rid of something on the field that you need to get rid of. Without Stardust being able to stop you from getting rid of it. Like let's say you play this. Uh, and then you target uh, Banny's Emptiness. I'm thinking more of start a spark, but you get the idea. If they have like a bad example or something similar to it, or anything that would prevent you from special summoning something, you can use this, get rid of the card. Because it doesn't, unlike MST, which does destroy it, this doesn't destroy it, so Stardust can't stop it. And then you can special summon and exceed and all that good stuff. You get the idea. It's very useful. Spell Shattering Arrow. Uh, obviously for pendulum decks it's useful against um, decks that are heavy in s continuous spell cards or you know good against crystal beasts and so forth and so forth so you get the idea and it burns so that extra damage comes in handy um, you can chain this to the activation of any spell card and deal your opponent damage so it itself becomes a burn card you don't have to destroy something that's already on the field you can just chain this to one of your opponent's um, sp spell activation. So if your opponent activates an MST, for example, you could chain this to the MST and deal them damage. You know, 500 damage can make a difference. Then I already mentioned Wing Wing Blast and win, uh, Spiritual Wind Art and roll the key what you do with those. Soul Charge, really good for since you exceed a lot, of course, a lot of your monsters will go to graveyard, so you can soul charge them back to the field. Exceed, you know, you can make multiple Chidoris. Uh, you can go into a Tiger King, Cowboy. You could do a Chidori, a Chidori Exiton play, where you, you know, you use Chidori's effect to spin a card on your opponent's side of the field on top of their deck, so because you want to make sure you still have them locked out right you have them locked out and then you can use exiton you know as long as you have less cards than your opponent use exiton's effect to destroy everything that's on the, that's currently on the field that way your opponent will you know either he'll be top decking or he'll just draw into the dead card you, you've sp spun back into the top of his deck and then you know you just at least bought yourself an extra turn 
or two. Technically, you bought yourself two turns, where you know you can make a comeback, and you know Exoton can put in work for you. Then we got Divine Wind of Miss Valley. Works good with the Yosinjus, especially if you only have like one copy of a Yosinju. Um, it's good even defensively. You play the field spell. You summon Yosinju. You can attack your opponent with the Yosinju. During the end phase, the Yosinju will go back to your hand. Then you can summon one from the deck. That one will, st will stay on the field because it was special, not normal. And you can use that defensively so you can you know go offense, defense, offense, defense. A good one to bring out would be uh, uh, would be uh, Suji Kirikaze or any any of them, especially if you use a, a, a Kirikaze and you bounce them back to your hand. You summon any of this or your Sinjus. You can summon them into attack mode if you want, in case your opponent doesn't pay attention and he decides he wants to attack because he thinks he's strong, and then you're like you discard. Uh, Kirikaze, and now <laughs> they just committed Kamikaze, right? So they just kill themselves. So you can you can do that. That's a useful play. Then we got Mind Control. It's a rank four deck, so you can take one of your opponents, level four monsters, and use it as X Y Z material. Or just use it to take their monster out of your way, especially if it's a monster that can't be destroyed by battle card effect. Take it out, take it out your way. Summon your Yo Sinjus, go for game. Snatch steel, relatively the same thing. Take their monster, use it as XYZ material, or just take it away from their side of field so that we can go for game. Crazy box in case your opponent has skill drain. And you know, so you have a nice little free 3000 beater. Ragnar Zero, good against decks that you know use cards to power boost or monsters that, that have effects that power boost themselves. This is good against them. Um, you can even use this in a mirror match, but mainly you know, you'll, you'll use this whenever and draw a card, so that's awesome. 101, just a good card in general. Has a good uh, ability to protect itself by, if it would be destroyed by a better card effect, detach the material instead. If you want, you could take one of your opponent's attack position monsters to a special summon, detach two materials, and, and turn that monster into a material for himself. Sky Blaster, essentially, is your fourth Chidori, so to speak. Um, you. You can even come with that weird Chidori if you want. Detach two materials, target one face up card your opponent controls, and shuffle it back into your opponent's deck. Uh, he has uh, his first effect, detach one material, target a face face up monster your opponent, uh, face up monster, target a face up monster on the field, change it to face on defense position. That effect is useful against stuff like Burning Abyss and whatnot, or just a monster that has an effect that <clears throat> maybe it has an effect like maybe it has attack boost like it has attack like let's say Commander Attack Fortress Commander Attack Fortress has attack because he was he was he was summoned and if you put him face down then when he flips summons he has zero attack so you can use that effect you know on monsters of that nature or you can use it on a monster that might prevent you from I don't know, activating something. Typically, you don't use that effect because of the fact that you could just flat out get rid of the monster. But if you want to not use up both materials to get rid of a monster, and putting the monster face down is more than enough for you for you to for you to beat your opponent with, then so be it. Um, or if you like, I say you, you could do a Chidori play where if you soul charge and you summon. Ca uh, uh, Castiel activates the first effect, detach 
Book of Moon a monster, you know, put a monster on the field face now. Then summon Chidori, you know, with the remaining two level fours you have. Exceed into Chidori, and then target with his uh, Chidori's, uh, Chidori's first effect. Um, target a face down, you know, the face down monster you put face down. And you can spin that to the bottom of your opponent's deck. That way it's not, his deck won't shuffle. You just spin it to the bottom of his, of his deck. And then let's say he has a card still face up. You can use Chidori's second effect, detached material. Target that face up card thrown on top of his deck. And now you'll be able to lock him out a little bit. So it's up to you on what you want to do. Exit, uh, of course. Helps you clear the field, especially if your opponent has a lot of card has uh, a lot of card advantage. You can take that away with this. Um, his effect is chainable, and it's a because it's a quick effect. You can activate during your main phase if you have more cards. If you have less cards than your opponent, and you can activate during your opponent's battle phase if he has more cards than you. And you can only activate this effect once per chain. Then we have number 82, Harlan Draco. Since you have the tanky, and you have the Divine Win at Myth Valley, and even the Snatch Steel, you can, you can prevent your opponent from being able to attack you by using those cards and Harlan Draco, and then even, of course, combine it with Royal Decree, and you can prevent him from being able to attack you as well as shut down his traps so that right there is a lock in itself of course he can still play spells use monster effects but if he doesn't have those types those you know if he doesn't have cards that he can use against you there are spells and monster effects and whatnot you can essentially lock him out and attack him and of course you can detach a material and then he can attack your opponent directly, you know, and he's the only monster that can attack the turn in which he's this effect. Rhapsody and Berserk good against any any decks that you know rely heavily on graveyard or there's something in the graveyard you you, you think your opponent's going to try to summon back, you can get rid of it, and he can, you can you can um, you can use his effect up to twice per turn, so you can you can Banish two cards from the graveyard, and then you can equip this card to an X face up XYZ monster you control and give it 1200 attack. So it's a good way of increasing your Chidori's effect, especially if you soul charge into Chidori. Use Chidori's effect to, especially both effects, to spin a card to the bottom, spin a card to the top, then use Rhapsody and Preserve. You can banish two cards from your opponent's graveyard, and then attack attach him to Chidori and then turn Chidori into a 19, 12, 30, 100. You could turn into a 3100 beat stick so it makes it hard for your opponent to be able to run it over so that we can use his effect, his second effect again the following turn to lock out your opponent and you know just keep attacking and beat your opponent down that way Wolf, um, you can tr de you detach a material. You contribute a beast, a beast word, or a wing beast type monster, and one card on the field. So all the monsters in the deck are beast words except for Dinotherum, which is a beast. But either way, they all meet the requirement to be able to activate his effect. So a, a combo you can do is special summon Dinotherum. Summon a a, a a Yosinju, which lets you summon another Yosinju. Right there, you have three monsters. You can overlay. It, it doesn't matter which two you overlay. Just you can overlay any of the two you any two you want. Make Diamond Dire Wolf, and then use Diamond Dire Wolf's effect targeting the the extra monster you have, whether it be a Beast type or Beast Warrior. Pop it, pop a card your opponent's side of the field, and you still have a 2000 you can attack with. So that's a combo you can do with Diamond Direwolf. Or you can just target Diamond Direwolf for his own effects since he's a beast type. 
and a card on the field and then destroy both cards got a cowboy you know help you you know win uh win games he has a decent first effect but typically his secondary effect is one you use the most which is detach the material while he's in defense mode deal 800 to your opponent but if he's in attack mode when you detach the material if this card attacks an opponent's monster this turn it gains a thousand attack so he'll become 2500 and your opponent's monster will lose 500 attack so anything 3000 or less he can he can easily take down battle wise then you have the Gusto I already mentioned you typically will use this to recycle most of your your Sinjus or your XYZs monsters he's win so you can you can use him with win art two Tiger Kings so we can get to your tankies you know thin out your deck faster plus he has He's a nice little 2200. He's a beast warrior, so he'll get a power boost from Tanky, of course. So it'll be 2300 with one Tanky. He also has the ability to detach a material, and you can make it where all non beast warrior type monsters lose their effect until the end of your opponent's next turn. So that's very useful, especially against monsters that can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. You take away their abilities. You know, whatever works. Typically, I I tend to do uh, Tiger King first turn, especially if I have two Yosinjus in my hand. I summon them. You know, use one's effect to summon the other one. Then overlay, make Tiger King use Tiger King's effect to grab a tanky, play the tanky, and then add any Yosinju I want from my deck to my hand. That way it thins out the deck, and plus I start off automatically with a 2300 that my opponent will have to try to play around. Now if Tiger King had the ability to activate his effect during my opponent's turn, that would be the nuts, right? <laughs> but he doesn't. But he's typically my first turn move. And then of course, three Chidoris, because he's the mighty Chidori, and this is your Chidori lock. And that's the end of the deck profile.